Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 17, actually chapter 18. We're going to start chapter 18 this morning. I want to take and uh, maybe get through chapter 18 this morning. I got a couple of books I'm going to read from this morning. Go to uh, chapter 18. Let's go to the Lord and prayer before we get started. Lord, I pray that you'll take and uh, be with the services. I pray that you'll take and uh, bless them. I pray that you'll take and uh, just be glorified this morning. I pray that you'll take and give us wisdom in these times and put, above all, put your hand of protection on us. We know all protection comes from you. Uh, Wisdom comes from you. I pray that we'll be a good testimony while also glorifying your name and serving you. And I pray that you'll take and uh, just bless the services this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, in the Bible, the birds represent spirits. Um, What represents the Holy Spirit? A dove. A dove represents the Holy Spirit. So what represents an unclean spirit? Crows. Crows. Uh, Unclean birds. It's going to be birds of prey. Birds of prey or uh, carrion birds. Like uh, crows, buzzards, um, the uh, yin and the yang bird. Yeah, you just mentioned it, magpie. (laughs) Black and white. (laughs) uh, (laughs) I call it the yin and the yang bird. Does anybody have any idea what I'm saying with that? (laughs) All right. uh, I'm going to... Magpies. Those are pictures of unclean birds. Uh, Take your Bible and look at Ecclesiastes... Uh, 1020 Ecclesiastes 1020 we have a phrase we say a little bird told me be careful what little bird is speaking to you Ecclesiastes chapter 10 look at verse uh, 20 curse not the king no not in thy thought and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Ain't that an interesting verse? We say a little bird told us. Well, there you go. You know, a lot of these phrases come from scriptures. You say, how would that happen? Well, a little bird tells you that's a spirit that talks. Uh, Do you realize that uh, spirits are interested in what you're saying? It really is. And it's not just clean spirits, but evil spirits. Uh, the evil spirits want leverage on you, and the Holy Spirit wants you to glorify God with your words. So uh, the Holy Spirit is like a dove. The unclean and hateful birds are foul spirits. Also, they're like uh, flies, foul spirits are. Beelzebub is reference to the devil. It means Lord of the Flies. The study of devils and spirits is something that's always fascinated me. Because, for one, where does the devils come from? you got fallen angels. But are the fallen angels actually spirits and devils? Spirits and devils uh, look to be small spirits that can inhabit a man. And they can influence a man depending on the power of the spirit in a physical way. Uh, They give them superhuman strength where they could break chains. They drive the person mad. The the man will 
throw himself into a fire when you study demon possessions. Yet they're small enough where over a thousand can be in one man. And, and they can possess a house. You clean a house and then uh, the devils leave and then they come back and inhabit it. Now, so it's always been an interesting to me where did they come from? Alright, when was the devils created? All right. God created everything. But can you give a verse when they were created? There's very little said about them. There's very little. Well, there, I wouldn't say there's little said about them. There's quite a bit said about them. But it's an interesting study on unclean the uh, devils. So uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils. And you say, well, why is that? Well, it's already the habitation of devils. But there's something about... They have a new science out now, and that science is studying the paranormal. You know, and they, they actually have scientists that are studying this, what they call a phenomenon. They realize that there's something there that they don't understand, so they're trying to study it and figure the thing out. And the, what the paranormal, what they've figured out is that it is associated with places. And a lot of times those places have a dark and evil history. Now, th now this is from a lost mindset. Yeah. They have figured this out. They know this to be true. So they go, oh, they go to these places and forests where witches gathered and they would do human sacrifices and stuff and they figure out that it has these paranormal activities. Or they go in places where there's mass graveyards and the dead are and they figure out there's this paranormal activity. Or they go to some evil castle or something that has a bad history of it and they figure out there's this paranormal activity. Now I got news for them because what I'm fixing to get into, I'll bet you if they went into any Catholic church that's more than a couple hundred years old, they would find this paranormal activity. I mean, there's something to it. And so the habitation, the place, guess what? The place does matter. It's a habitation of every unclean and foul spirit. So there's something to the place. Let me tell you, there's some places you should not go and hang around. Has a bad spirit about it. Has a bad spirit about it. Uh, you, you t I'll tell you, you walk into some places and you just fill it a bad spirit about this place. It's a bad spirit. And, and I want to flirt with that stuff. I want to mess around with that stuff. I, I'll tell you, I mean, there's some areas where I just, I, I'll get there and I'll just say, you know what? It's time to go. And I, I used to, we had a cemetery about, and uh, I don't mean to sound like a, uh, what do you call it? Paranoid? paranoid person. But we had this cemetery about um, half a mile from us. It's called Sheba Cemetery. And we'd go up there as kids and Sheba Cemetery was haunted. And you say, who was haunting it? Well, it was mainly the Witter kids. But, uh, <laughs> but it didn't have a... I mean, but you'd get... I'd go hunting sometimes as a young teenager. And in Tennessee, you go and you find a place and you sit there. And the idea was you get there an hour before light. And you sit there and what let the woods settle down. And that way everything settled down. And uh, several of my hunting spots, I'd have to walk through that cemetery to get to my hunting spots. Or be up close to the cemetery. And I'll tell you, you, you a teenage boy, you walking through a cemetery at about... Four o'clock in the morning in the dark. I tell you, you, just get this cold shiver up your back. <laughs> I mean, you don't like it. You don't like the place. 
And uh, we used to have uh, fun with that thing. I mean, I remember me and the preacher's kid one day, we go, went up there one night, and we always had outings at our house, especially for in the fall time, we'd have the fall weenie roast. We went up there, we got this uh, throw frisbee that was glow in the dark, and we went up there and hid behind the tombstones. We'd wait till a car drove by. We'd throw that frisbee across some tombstones. <laughs> Glowing in the, you'd see a car screech and stuff. One day we took one of them. How many of you ever seen them old toy walking dolls that stood about that tall? We took one of those things and we put a sheet on it and put flour on the face. And there was a bridge about... 200 yards from that cemetery that went across one road, one road went across the other, you went under the Natchez Trace. We got up on that top road and we put fishing line around that doll and laid it down on the road. We were up on that bridge hiding. Car come up and pull and we'd take and pull the fishing line and that doll would stand up. And they'd stop and they'd look at it. Then we'd raise it about four feet off the ground in the air. It'd Tired squall backwards. We we had fun with that until one guy got up. You kids get down! <laughs> We're like, boy, that dog went up real quick. We took off. <laughs> so so Sheba Cemetery was haunted. All right, <laughs> but you know that stuff. There's a lot of it's probably kids playing. You know, these kids, these haunted phenomenals, is probably kids playing. I mean, uh, I think a lot of your UFO sightings is the government playing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, you, you can do some stuff that will really trick people's minds if it's associated with the right place. And we had that cemetery, we could, what, the really thing that made it successful there was it was associated with a cemetery. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is certain places is a habitation for spirits. And I, I believe that. I believe that to be true. And here you have a verse that kind of goes along with that, with uh, Babylon. The great is fallen, is fallen. It's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now, uh, that verse is uh, a reference to something in the future, but it's taken off of its type, which is Babylon, the city Babylon, the actual Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar, was a type of this city in the future. So you add the actual physical Babylon in the Old Testament, and then you have mystery Babylon in Revelation in the future. So if you want to study um, mystery Babylon, you look at her type. And this prophecy is taking out of the type. Now go to Jeremiah chapter 51. Now here's another prophecy on the actual city Babylon in, of the Medes and, of Nebuchadnezzar that's destroyed by the Medes and the Persians, and Jeremiah makes a prophecy against it in Jeremiah 51. Now look how similar this prophecy is with the one in Revelation. Jeremiah chapter 51, and pick up verse 6. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul, be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord. Vengeance he will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. 
If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Now uh, look at verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the what? Medes. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Well, that's the Medes and the Persians when they come in in the book of Daniel and take Babylon and destroy it. So the Old Testament Babylon is a picture of what's going to happen to the one mystery Babylon. It's, it's uh, this almost very similar to the same. And, God, and there's a reason that God calls it Mystery Babylon because he's picking a city in the Old Testament that is the same type. Now at the time Jeremiah writes that, it's still prophecy because it hadn't happened yet. But guess what? Revelation is long written long after it has happened. And Revelation is a future event. Now the mystery Babylon is not the same city. Now that makes some people think that mystery Babylon is, is a future thing. Now some people they think that Babylon, it's act, mystery Babylon is actually the city of Babylon. But that doesn't work. And it's not going to fit. And uh, I've heard it taught that it's uh, over there in, I think it's Iraq, and they're going to rebuild Babylon, and that's at the actual city of Babylon. I've heard that taught. Well, the, there's some things in this passage that does not fit that. For one, it has to be a coastal town, one close to the sea, for it to fit the prophecy in Revelation. So that one doesn't. So uh, those two prophecies, uh, there's a reason that that city was picked in Babylon. And it was a very violent city. When Nebuchadnezzar came in, it came in with, he came in with no mercy. And he destroyed women and children, and he murdered them. And he put out the eyes of the king of Israel, Zedekiah. And he was a very merciless king. He was a very proud king. He had no respect for God or the children of God or the things of God when he came in. Now, through, now with Nebuchadnezzar, he's converted by the influence of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and God dealing with him. But his son, Belteshazzar, falls, and he falls while he's partying, drinking wine, from cup, golden cups. And the Medes and the Persians come in and it falls in one day. That was a great city. All right? So that's the picture that's given of the city that's going to fall in the tribulation. Now, as we pointed out uh, last week, that city is the Vatican. All right? It's going to be the Vatican city of Rome. Now, let's continue uh, reading. Here, verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So, what do you have? You have Christians that's caught up with this city. In other words, not every Catholic is lost. You realize that. Not every Catholic is lost. And there's going to be people tied in with this Catholic church all the way up to the rapture and probably uh, tribulation saints will be tied up with it also. Uh, it says come out from among her. Now in church history that happens. You have a great movement that comes out of her and it's called the Protestant movement. And those were people that got saved, who were associated with the Catholic Church, seeing the hypocrisy and corruption in it, and came out of it. 
So that was fulfilled somewhat spiritually with the Protestant movement. Now I'm sure there's going to be a second part of that in the tribulation where they come out of it. Uh, and maybe it might even be uh, with the Jewish nation being tied up with it and have to come out. Because guess what? The Jewish nation has plenty of corruption right now. But they are still referred to in the tribulation as God's people. And He saves them as a nation. All right, So it could be a reference for where the political nation has to come out from among her and quit associating with her in the tribulation. My people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So, now her iniquities go all the way back to Rome in the time of the apostles. Because Vatican City is no other than Rome that changed from a political state to a religious state, but kept on going. It's never been destroyed. Rome is still here. The Rome of Caesar and Nero is still here. It's Vatican City. It's just changed its colors a little bit. It's changed its colors a little bit. But it's still here. It's still the same. And the sins of it has been a very violent history of murder and corruption. And I'm going to read you a couple here in a little bit. I'm going to read you a little bit from it, these books. For her sins have reached unto heaven, God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she have filled, fill to her double. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and no widow, and shall see no sorrow. I sit a queen. All right? So she's referred to as Holy Mother Church that's reigned by the Queen of Heaven. Take your Bible and turn to Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44. And look in verse 17. Now, uh, you, there's a couple of things that you ought to do if you get a chance. You ought to take your computer and type in Queen of Heaven. And you will see pictures of two different things. You'll see pictures of Mary. And you will see pictures of going beyond Mary to Greek theology with the Queen of Heaven. Why? Because they're one and the same. They're one and the same. It's the same thing. That uh, traditional worship of Mary was long before the actual birth of Christ and Mary. That thing was an ancient worship of a female goddess. So that thing goes way back. And basically all the Catholic Church did was they took Mary and they took that female goddess and they made them one and the same. And then they continued that uh, worship of a female deist. And that's what the worship of Mary came from. Uh, the worship of Mary did not show up, I think, until almost a thousand years after the birth of Christ. There was a few, but it wasn't that popular till almost a thousand years after the birth of Christ. And what happened in 300, uh, when pagan Rome turned into religious Rome, was uh, around the time of a man named Constantine. Uh, you've heard that name. Uh, and Constantine... Uh, was a Roman soldier that started conquering all these pagan countries, and then he would take their um, idolatry, mix it with the nation of Rome, and became a religious system. So it went from a political system to a religious system, but it stayed a political system. So it's both religious and political. That's, uh, that's the way that thing originated. Now, look at, I mean, Jeremiah 44, and look at verse 17. 44, verse 17. 
But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But when, since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings, Unto her we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her, what, cakes to worship her? We called that the communion cookie. Okay? A mass today. Now when was this written? This was written in Jeremiah. This was written almost 600 years before Christ. And what do you have? Well, you, already, you still have the Mass to the Queen of Heaven. So what does that show you? That shows you that this religious system was here long before Mary showed up. The worshiping of this Queen of Heaven. Alright? This thing didn't show up with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church adopted it. Alright? And kept on going. You say, when did that actually show up? Way back at the Tower of Babel. And that thing's been going the whole time. And uh, it turned into a worship in the Bible called bell worship. Bell worship. Uh, it's a mixture of bell worship and the worship of Asheroth. Those two. You see both of them in the Bible. And that thing's going on today. It's still going on today and it's associated with this city and it'll be burned in the tribulation or her sins will be remembered now uh, she says I sit as a queen when you see them pictures you'll see a woman sitting on a throne and she'll be referred to as the queen of heaven look it up I sit as a queen she's referred to as the mother church female I'll Stick with Father God. <laughs> it's not a biblical setup. There's nothing by they, they, That's why they put traditions as high as Scripture. They put them higher. Revelation 18, 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, God hath remembered her with uh, iniquities. I sit as, uh, verse 7, I sit as a queen and no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Verse 9, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her for when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones of pearl and fine linen, and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious woods and brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of... Now look at it. And souls of men. That's her merchandise. Now you look back at uh, this city, it's a city, I made it clear, it's a city, it's a city that uh, commits idolatry with kings, it's a political city, it's also a rich city, it's a city with purple and scarlet. Look up the pictures of the priest and the bishops and the cardinals, purple and scarlet is their clothing. Look it up, I mean it's not a hidden thing. It's obvious when you look it up. Slaves and souls of men. What, what's it done? It's, it's took in uh, men and it's took and corrupted them. And it's got a hold on them where they can't get out of that system. The Bible says, come out from among her. 
uh, souls of men. Verse 14, And the fruit of thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones and pearls, for a one hour, so great riches has come to naught. It's the richest city on this earth has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? So they can see it from the sea. They can see the smoke from the sea. All right, that kind of rules out the traditional site of Babylon, which is in Iraq. There's no sea close enough to see it. Where with uh, Vatican, it's there. That's why it's mystery Babylon. It's not the old physical Babylon, it's mystery Babylon. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Now look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heavens, ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. I want to read some exhortations on her sins. Now, first, now these are two books. These are his, history books that was recorded in history. Fox's Book of Martyrs was written in by... Mr. Fox in 1563. All right? So you're going to take and go to the author. You have to go several centuries back. In uh, Martyr's Mirror, it was written by Philem J. Von Brott. And the, it goes back to the English edition, 1886. Yeah, I think the actual authorship of it goes back farther than that. There's your book. Documented evidence of all the interrogations and what went on. That thick. Now, let me read you an exhortation from Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now this is a farther account of the persecution in the valley of Padema in the 17th century. Pope Clement the eighth sent missionaries into the valley of Piedmont to induce the Protestants to renounce their religion. So this is a religious war to bring the Protestants back under the Pope. Okay. These missionaries erecting monasteries soon become so troublesome to the Reformed that they petitioned the Duke of Savoy for protection. But instead of this, the Duke published a decree... Now, he's the, the political leader there. But instead of this, the Duke published a decree that one witness should be sufficient in a court of law against a Protestant, and that any witness who convicted a Protestant of crime should receive a hundred crowns as a reward in consequence of this. Many Protestants fell martyrs to the perjury and avarice for there were papists who would swear anything against them for the sake of the reward and then fly to their priest for absolution. Among the victims of these persecutions were the following. Peter Simons, a Protestant, about 80 years of age, was bound and then thrown down a precipice. In the fall, the branch of the tree caught hold of the ropes that fastened him and sustained him midway, so they languished for several days till he perished of hunger. A woman named Armin had her limbs separated from each other. The parts were then hung on a hedge. Several men, women, and children were flung from rocks and dashed into pieces. Among others was Magdalene Bertino, a Protestant woman of La Torah, who was bound and thrown down one of the precipices. 
Mary Ramadan of the same town had her flesh mangled till she expired. Magdalene Pilate of Valero was cut to pieces in the cave of Castellus. And Charbonera had one end of a stake thrust into her body and the other end being fixed in the ground. She was left to perish. Jacob Perrin, the elder of the church of Valero, now this is a preacher, with David, his brother, were flayed alive. I can keep on going. It goes into eight-year-old children being murdered and tortured and so on and so forth. All in the name to bring the Protestants back under the church. It, it makes my blood boil. Whole book of centuries of that. They called it the Dark Ages. You know what they try to do? They try to rewrite history and say it didn't happen. Just like they do with World War II. It happened. She had blood on her hands. Ryers, Ryers Dick, boatman, citizen of this city, did about three years ago embrace the doctrine, errors, sects, and heresies of the Anabaptist. Now that's the group you come from. Anabaptist, rebaptized. They did not recognize infant baptism. Uh, they never were part of the Church of Rome. They went against the Catholic Church. They always believed against it, and they were the ones that influenced the Protestant movement, influenced Martin Luther to come out from. All right? Now here's a, some of the persecution that they endured. Anabaptists is holding pernicious views with regard to the sacraments of the Holy Church. Contrary to the Holy Christian faith, the ordinance of the Holy Church and the written laws and decrees of His Imperial Majesties, our gracious Lord, and, and moreover persist in His errors and heresies, notwithstanding the instructions given Him in the true faith. So what it is, is it's written by the Catholic. Why they did this to Him. Because He denied the Mass, denied the Holy Church, denied all this. Therefore, my lords of the court, having heard the demand made by my lord Bailiff in his name of his imperial majesty concerning the four mentioned Ryer Derricks, as also his confession, and having duly considered the circumstances of the case, condemned said Ryer Derricks, pursuant to the aforesaid decrees to be executed with fire by the executioner, and furthermore declare his property confiscated for the benefit of his imperial majesty as Count of Holland without derogation and prejudice to the privilege of this city. Thus pronounced and committed to the executioner for execution the 16th day of August, A.D. 1550, in the presence of the bailiff, all the burgomasters, and all the judges with the exception of Jan Dunin. Ryer Der Derricks was examined by torture the 9th of July, A.D. 1550, extracted from the Book of Criminal Sentences in keeping the secretary of the city of Amsterdam. So what is this book? It is the recordings. It's the recordings that the Catholics took while they tortured these people and recorded it to bring them under subjection. got blood on her hands. Blood on her hands. Yes. In uh, verse 19 at the end it said was, and in one hour she was made desolate. Now historically yeah. is that just before the uh, second advent? Yeah. Well uh, it's got to be somewhere in that second three and a half. Exactly yeah. where it is I don't know. Okay. But it, I would say it's a literal one hour too. Just like the ancient Babylon fell immediately with Belshazzar. I would say it's one literal hour. 60 minutes that thing falls. As them ten kings that burns her. That's in association with the Antichrist. Burns her. Yeah, I mean, if you want to read some history book, that's a history book you ought to read. Is I highly recommend anybody over the age of 16 to read this book. I read it the first time. I was probably 15, 16 years old. Now, I'll tell you, you read some of that. Rebecca never would read it. She couldn't handle it. 
It is, I mean, it's a rough book. It gives you the details. Now, if you really want to get into it, you can do this one. Uh, it's from the time of Christ to A.D. 1660. And it gives you the martyrs all the way from Nero up to 1660. It's a history book up to the year 1660. Uh, this one's up to 1600s. Fox's Book of Martyrs. And uh, a lot of the accounts will be somewhat the same in those two, but that one's more detailed. It's the actual writing of uh, that, the one's written like a history book from the perspective of Fox. The other one is just taking the documents and reading what they said. Marta Mir. But uh, that's uh, Mystery Babylon, the Great. A religious system that's a political system that will martyr anybody that disagrees with them. You say they're not the same today. That's because they don't have the power to get away with it. But let me tell you, you give them that power, you see what they'll do. You just see what they'll do. They're a little bit trickier. Don't you realize that Hitler's generals were all Jesuits? They had the blessing of the Pope until the tides of the war changed. Then he flipped. It's political. That one gets my blood warm. Do we add that none of those Nazis were excommunicated? Not a single one? No. But see, that, the, yeah. the history of that stuff's hidden. They don't show that stuff. They don't show it. And, and you live in uh, religious freedom. Was That is what they're trying to get the freedom of. Because when the Church of England started, under Henry VIII, it ad- Adapted that way of doing things. And that was what you were, what the American people were under in the 1700s when they took and revolted against England. It was religious and political. The most dangerous system is a religious political system. I don't care if it's a Muslim system or a Catholic system. And, and we're going to get into it with memorial. I'm going to do a Memorial Day service on liberty. But uh, you, take in a, you take a religious power and you make that thing a political power, you're dealing with a very dangerous thing. You take a political power that removes all religion... Communism, where they make themselves a god, you're dealing with a very dangerous thing. In man's fallen state, the best type of society is a free democracy and republic. Like America was set up as. Where you have liberty to worship as you're led without harming someone else. Without harming somebody else. What they did was, if you didn't agree with us, we'll harm you. We'll physically make you agree. And that's wrong. The only one that can get away with that is someone that's perfect. So that will not work until the Lord comes. Now the Lord will set it up different, but then that's the only one that can make that work is the Lord Jesus Christ. Whereas, done right. Alright, uh, let's take and uh, close there and we'll pick up next week.